Hi everyone, welcome to the new course on electrochemistry, one of the important topic in chemistry for second PUC. So various questions can be asked on electrochemistry. So we will before going to solve MCQs, we will move to, we will go through synopsis. So electrochemistry. First we learn what does electrochemistry means. Electrochemistry is that branch of chemistry which deals with the study of production of electricity from energy released during spontaneous chemical reactions and the use of electrical energy to bring about non-spontaneous chemical transformations. So in simple words we can say the electric energy is converted into chemical energy and chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. The study of this interconversion of electrical energy into chemical energy and chemical energy into electrical energy is said to be electrochemistry. What are the importance of this electrochemistry? We will see. Here the first one is production of metals like sodium, magnesium, calcium and aluminium. In the production of these metals, the electrochemistry is used because there we use electrolysis process to purify these metals and electroplating there also electrochemistry works purification of metals batteries and cells used in various instruments these are certain importance or applications of electrochemistry then before going to know the various concepts in electrochemistry first we should know what are conductors Conductors means these are the substances that allow electric current to pass through them are known as conductors and in conductors only there are two types metallic conductors or electronic conductors and electrolytic conductors or electrolytes okay so these are the two types of conductors so first what does metallic conductors means metallic conductors these are the substances which allow the electric current to pass through them by the movement of electrons are called metallic conductors. So usually the metals are the examples of metallic conductors where the electric current is passed through them due to the movement of electrons. The second type is electrolytic conductors or electrolytes. These are the substances which allow the passage of electricity through their fused state or aqueous solution and undergo chemical decomposition are called electrolytic conductors. The examples are aqueous solutions of acids, bases and salts. So this is, these are the two types of conductors. Then we will focus on electrolytic conductors or electrolytes. So electrolytes are of two types. One is strong electrolytes and another one is weak electrolytes. The strong electrolytes are completely dissociate or ionized into ions. Okay. Examples are HCl, NaOH, K2SO4 and other salts. NaCl, you can take NaCl also, KCl. All these are examples for strong electrolytes because they will undergo complete dissociation. Whatever compounds undergo complete dissociation or ionization, they are said to be strong electrolytes. And weak electrolytes, these are the electrolytes that dissociate partially are called weak electrolytes. Okay, so here complete dissociation will not take place incomplete dissociation or partial dissociation of ions will take place and such electrolytes are said to be weak electrolytes and here the examples are weak acids and bases examples are acetic acid carbonic acid nh4oh h2s etc these are the weak electrolytes and strong electrolytes examples are strong acids strong bases and salts Okay, then electrochemical cell. So here a cell of almost constant EMF is called standard cell. 
the most common is western standard cell galvanic cell is also called as voltaic cell so general representation of an electrochemical cell how we represent the electrochemical cell because to draw the structure of battery it is quite difficult and hence we will simply represent how that electrochemical cell is there in that battery so this can be represented in this manner at the left hand side you can observe anode bar oxidation of cell and at the center salt bridge is there and then at the right hand side the another metal which acts as cathode and the reduction will takes place at cathode reduction will takes place and at anode oxidation will takes place now here what are the conventions here they have given sign cathode positive sign due to consumption of electrons reduction will takes place on cathode and sign is represented by positive and anode negative sign is used due to release of electrons when electrons are released then at that side the electron charge will appear and that is represented as negative and reduction which type of reaction will takes place at cathode reduction will takes place and at anode oxidation will takes place movement of electrons at cathode into the cell and anode out of cell so these are certain conventions that are used it during the electrochemical cell representation okay then one of the example of electrochemical cell is daniel cell so daniel cell it is an electrochemical cell of zinc and copper metals it is known as daniel cell it is represented as in this manner it is represented okay in one of the beaker zinc sulfate is taken in that zinc metal is immersed and it acts as anode and at another beaker copper sulfate solution is taken and copper metal rod is immersed in and i which acts as a cathode and both are connected and at the center voltmeter is there and interconnected by a salt bridge okay so here they have given by convention cathode is represented on rhs and anode on the lhs so what is the function of this salt bridge that we will see it completes the circuit and allows the flow of current and second one is it maintains the electrical neutrality on both sides salt bridge generally contains solution of strong electrolyte such as kno3 kcl and kcl is preferred because the transport numbers of k plus and cl minus are almost same so these are certain applications or functions of salt bridge hence we are using salt bridge here okay so remember these functions of salt bridge then what does transport number or transference number as we have seen in salt bridge the transport number of k plus and cl minus are almost same then what does that transport number means transport number means it is the current flowing through an electrolytic solution is carried by the ions the fraction of the current carried by an ion is called its transport number or transference number what does transport number means fraction of the current carried by an ion okay and transport number of cation is represented as nc which is calculated by current carried by cation divided by total current and transport number of anion sorry this should be anion okay so anion na is equal to current carried by an anion divided by total current so when we take the sum of total transport number of cation and transport number of anion that is equal to 1 the next concept is electrode potential so when an electrode is in contact with the solution of its ions in a half cell 
it has a tendency to lose or gain electrons which is known as electrode potential it is expressed in volts it is an intensive property that is independent of the amount of species in the reaction whatever amount it may be but its value will remains same then in this only we can find two types of potential one is oxidation potential and another one is reduction potential as here in electrode potential we have mentioned it has a tendency to lose or gain electrons so whether it loses or gains electrons based on that we have classified them into two types those are oxidation and reduction potential so the oxidation potential is the tendency to lose electrons in the above case is known as oxidation potential so oxidation potential of a half cell is inversely proportional to the concentration of ions in the solution so as concentration of ions increases oxidation potential decreases and as concentration of ions decreases oxidation potential will increases then another one is reduction potential so reduction potential is the tendency to gain electrons and according to iupac convention the reduction potential alone be called as electrode potential unless it is specifically mentioned so in general if in a question they have given electrode potential that means it has indicating the reduction potential only okay by conventionally we will take reduction potential if they have mentioned oxidation potential in such case only we have to consider that otherwise in by convention we have to take reduction potential only so e reduction standard electrode reduction potential is equal to negative of oxidation potential it is not possible to determine the absolute value of electrode potential for this a reference electrode that is normal hydrogen electrode or standard hydrogen electrode is required the electrode potential is only the differential of potentials between the two electrodes that we can measure by combining them to give a complete cell so standard electrode potential the potential difference developed between metal electrode and the solution of ions of unit molarity at one atmosphere pressure and 25 degree celsius temperature is called standard potential it is denoted by e not and what does reference electrode means the electrode of known potential is called reference electrode means its potential is already known and it may be primary reference electrode like hydrogen electrode or secondary reference electrode like calomel electrode then standard hydrogen electrode we will see what does this means it is known as she so it is also known as normal hydrogen electrode consist of platinum wire carrying platinum foil coated with finely divided platinum black the wire is sealed into a glass tube placed in a beaker containing 1 m hcl the hydrogen gas at one atmosphere pressure is bubbled through the solution at 298 kelvin the half cell is platinum hydrogen and h plus ion and this is the reaction in a standard hydrogen electrode at the surface of platinum either of the reaction will takes place so the reduction and oxidation the electrode potential of shg can be fixed as zero at all temperatures so here the electrode potential of standard hydrogen electrode is zero now what are the drawbacks or limitations of this shg the first one is it is difficult to maintain one atmosphere pressure of hydrogen gas it is difficult to maintain h plus ion concentration at one m and the platinum electrode is easily poisoned by traces of impurities 
as the calomel electrodes are conveniently used as reference electrodes. It consists of mercury in contact with Hg2Cl2 that is mercurous chloride which is known as calomel based in a solution of KCl. Then one of the important equation in electrochemistry that is Nernst equation. So what does this Nernst equation means? So this is the equation which gives the relationship between the concentration of ions and the electrode potential which is given by this equation okay the electrode potential of a given metal is equal to standard electrode potential of that metal minus 0.0591 divided by n log concentration of 1 divided by mn plus so for a electrochemical cell we can represent the equation like this so concentration of pure solids and liquids is taken as unity Nernst equation and equilibrium constant so the relationship between these two can be given as e naught cell is equal to 0.0591 divided by n log kc at 298 and also the relationship between standard of Gibbs free energy change is given as delta G naught is equal to minus n f e naught cell so these are the two important equations or relations okay now here we have given type of reaction and standard Gibbs free energy change standard electrode potential type of cell if the reaction is spontaneous delta G naught will be negative and E naught should be positive and type of cell is galvanic if type of reaction is non spontaneous then standard free energy is positive and E naught cell is negative type of cell is electrolytic cell if type of reaction means reaction is in equilibrium all are zero and the cell is dead okay and relationship between free energy change and equilibrium constant it is given by delta G naught is equal to minus 2.303 RT log KC. So these three are very important relations. Okay, remember these relations. Based on these relations, the questions can be asked. Okay. Then the electrode concentration cells, two hydrogen electrodes or different pressures are dipped in same solution of electrolyte. Then the equation is given if at two different pressures the electrodes are dipped then we use e cell is equal to 2.303 rt divided by nf log p2 divided by p1 then electrolytic concentration cells electrodes are at the same but the electrolyte solutions have different concentrations so here both are zn only but the concentrations of those solutions is different in such cases we use e cell is equal to 2.303 rt divided by nf log c2 divided by c1 or it is equal to 0.0591 divided by n log c2 divided by c1 then molar conductivity so molar conductivity it is represented as lambda m so it is the conductivity of all the ions produced when one mole of an electrolyte is dissolved in v ml of solution okay then it is related to specific conductance as lambda m is equal to the power into thousand divided by m where m is molarity and its unit r per ohm square centimeter per mole or Siemens square centimeter per mole then equivalent conductivity the conducting power of all the ions produced when one gram equivalent of an electrolyte is dissolved in VML of solution is called equivalent conductivity it is related to specific conductance as lambda m is equal to k into thousand divided by n where k is kappa and where n is normality and its unit are per ohm square centimeter or mo per square centimeter 
पर सीमन पर स्क्वायर सेंटीमीटर सीमन स्क्वायर सेंटीमीटर और ग्राम पर इक्वेलेंट ओके देन डी बाय हुकल ऑन सागर इक्वेशन इट गिव्स ए रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन मोलार कंडक्टिविटी लैम्डा एम एट ए पर्टिकुलर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड मोलार कंडक्टिविटी एट इनफाइनाइट डायल्यूशन इट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड एज लैम्डा एम इज इक्वल टू लैम्डा एम नॉट माइनस स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ सी सो इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग रिमेंबर दिस इक्वेशन वेर बी इज कॉन्स्टेंट इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द नेचर ऑफ सॉलवेंट एंड टेम्परेचर ओके नेक्स्ट फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग कंडक्टिविटी सो वॉट आर द फैक्टर्स विच अफेक्ट्स द कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक सोल्यूशन सो फर्स्ट वन इज नेचर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोलाइट द नेचर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोलाइट यर द स्ट्रॉन्ग इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स लाइक के एन ओ थ्री के सी एल एन ओ एच आर कंप्लीटली आयोनाइज इन एक्वे सोल्यूशन एंड हैव हाई वैल्यूज ऑफ कंडक्टिविटी देन द वीक इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स आर आयोनाइज टू लेसर एक्सटेंट इन एक्वे सोल्यूशन एंड हेंस दे हैव लोअर वैल्यूज ऑफ कंडक्टिविटी देन सेकेंड वन इज कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द सोल्यूशन the concentrated solutions of strong electrolytes have significant intraionic attractions which reduce the speed of ions and lower the value of lambda ion and lambda equivalent that is equivalent conductance the dilution decreases such attractions and increase the value of molar conductivity and equivalent conductivity the limiting value of standard molar conductivity and molar conductivity at infinity can be obtained extrapolating the graph so this is the graph which indicates the lambda m versus square root of the concentration how the molar conductivity and concentration varies the third one is temperature the increase of temperature decreases interionic attractions and increases kinetic energy of ions and their speed thus lambda m and lambda equivalent increases with temperature then colroch law what it states at infinite dilution the molar conductivity of an electrolyte is the sum of the ionic conductivities of the cations and anions for example axby so for this kind of salt okay or electrolyte it can be given like this okay so applications of this law determination of equivalent or molar conductivities of weak electrolytes at infinite dilution go through this example determination of degree of dissociation of an electrolyte at a given dilution okay that is given by this equation alpha is equal to molar conductance at concentration c divided by molar conductance at infinite dilution the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt can be calculated as lambda m not is equal to kappa into 1000 divided by solubility or solubility is equal to kappa into 1000 divided by molar conductivity at zero concentration then faraday's laws of electrolysis the first law the amount of the substance deposited or liberated at cathode directly proportional to quantity of electricity passed through electrolyte which is given as w is directly proportional to i into t or it is equal to i t into z where z is a constant or it is also represented as q into z because i is equal to i into t is equal to q where is q is quantity of charge i is current in amperes t is time in seconds and z is a constant which is known as electrochemical equivalent when i is equal to 1 ampere t is equal to 1 second and then q is equal to 1 coulomb then w is equal to z thus electrochemical equivalent is the amount of substance deposited or liberated by passing One ampere current for one second. That is one coulomb is equal to I into T is equal to Q. Then second law. When the same quantity of electricity 
is passed through different electrolytes. The amounts of substance deposited or liberated at the electrodes are directly proportional to their equivalent weights. Thus, mass of A divided by mass of B is equal to equivalent weight of A upon equivalent weight of B. That is given by W1 divided by W2 is equal to E1 divided by E2. Gives Z1Q divided by Z2Q is equal to E1 divided by E2. Because W is nothing but Q into Z. Hence it is written as Z1Q and Z2Q. Hence electrochemical equivalent is directly proportional to equivalent weight. Then batteries. These are the source of electrical energy which may have one or more cells connected in series. For a good quality battery, it should be reasonably light, impact and its voltage should not vary appreciably during its use. So first, there are two types of batteries. One is primary batteries. In the primary batteries, the reaction occurs only once and after use over a period of time, battery becomes dead and cannot be reused again. Examples of primary batteries are dry cell or Lagrange cell and here another cell that is mercury cell. And these are the reactions which takes place in Lagrange cell and this is the reaction which takes place in mercury cell. So in mercury cell anode is zinc and Hg amalgam and the cathode is based of HgO and carbon and electrolyte is moist paste of KOH and ZNO then secondary batteries these cells can be recharged and can be used again and again examples are lead storage battery and here anode is spongy lead cathode is grid of lead packed with PbO2 and electrolyte is 38% of H2SO4 by mass and this is the reaction which takes place in lead storage battery. Then another one is nickel cadmium storage cell. Anode is cadmium, cathode is metal grid containing nickel oxide, electrolyte is KOH solution and this is the reaction which takes place in nickel cadmium storage cell. Then fuel cells. Fuel cells, these are the galvanic cells which use energy of combustion of fuels like H2, CH4, CH3O3, etc. as the source to produce electrical energy are called fuel cells. The fuel cells are pollution free and have high efficiency. One of the example of fuel cell is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. The electrodes made of porous graphite impregnated with catalyst like platinum, silver or metal oxide and electrolyte is aqueous solution of KOH or NOH. Oxygen and hydrogen are continuously fed into the shell. This is the reaction which takes place in hydrogen oxygen fuel cell and you can observe at the end of this reaction the product obtained is water which is it does not cause us any harm to the environment hence these are said to be eco-friendly then corrosion the slow formation of undesirable compounds such as oxides sulfides or carbonates at the surface of metals by reaction with moisture and other atmospheric gases is known as corrosion the factors affecting corrosion are reactivity of metals, presence of moisture and atmospheric gases like CO2, SO2 and etc. Presence of impurities, strains in the metals and presence of electrolyte. So this is the reaction which takes place during the rusting of iron which is one of the common process. Then how to prevent the rusting of iron? It can be prevented by following methods. So these methods can be used for preventing the corrosion of any metal. One is by barrier protection through coating of paints or electroplating, through galvanization or coating of surface with thin metal, 
by the use of anti-rust solutions like bisphenol, by cathodic protection in which a metal is protected from corrosion by connecting it to another metal that is more easily oxidized. So this is all about the synopsis of electrochemistry. So go through one by one through all these theory part then only you can easily solve the questions which can be asked on the chapter electrochemistry okay next we will solve the questions on electrochemistry so the first question is aqueous solution of which of the following compounds is the best conductor of electric current so option a acetic acid option b hydrochloric acid option c ammonia and d fructose so among these four which one is the best conductor of electric current as you know the factors which affects the electrical conductivity of the solution one of them is the type of electrolyte whether it is a strong electrolyte or weak electrolyte based on that we can find the conductivity of the solution and here we need to find which one of the following is the strong electrolyte so in the given options acetic acid is weak electrolyte ammonia is also weak electrolyte and fructose it is a non electrolyte so among these four options the option b that is hydrochloric acid is the strong electrolyte and hence it is a best conductor of electric current so option b hydrochloric acid is the right answer then second question an increase in the conductivity equivalent of a solid electrolyte with the dilute dilution is primarily due to so increased ionic mobility of ions 100% electrolyte ionization with natural dilution increase in both ion numbers and ionic mobility and rise in ion counts so among these four the increase in conductivity is due to the mainly due to the increase in the ionic mobility of ions as mobility of ions increases the conductivity will also increases so the option a is the right one third one the ionic conductance of ba plus 2 and cl minus r respectively 127 and 76 per ohm at infinite dilution the equivalent conductance of BaCl2 at infinite dilution will be so how to find the equivalent conductance of BaCl2 how you find the molar conductivity of solution at infinite dilution it is given by lambda m at infinity of BaCl2 is equal to lambda m infinity ba plus 2 plus 2 lambda m infinity cl minus and in the similar manner lambda equivalent so since they have asked you to find the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution it is given by ba cl2 is equal to half lambda m naught m infinity ba plus 2 plus lambda m infinity cl minus here half is taken because the equivalent weight of ba cl2 it can be calculated by molecular weight divided by 2 because in ba cl2 the charge is plus 2 and hence here it is taken as half lambda m infinity ba plus 2 since we divide molecular weight by 2 therefore now substitute the values what is the value of molar conductivity of the ba plus 2 ionic conductance of ba plus 2 how much it is it is 127 so 1 by 2 into 127 plus ionic conductance of cl minus it is 76 per ohm so 76 how much you will get on simplification 
you will get 139.5 per ohm per centimeter so this is the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution so which option is right here here we have got 139.5 but here they have given 139 so take this answer only so option a is the right answer next fourth one when heating one end of a metal plate the other end gets hot because of a resistance of the metal b mobility of atoms in the metal energized electrons moving to the other end d minor perturbation in the energy of atoms so the conductivity of the metal as well as the thermal conductance or electrical conductance of the metal it is due to the energized electrons moving to the other end due to the movement of these free electrons the metals will act as good conductors of heat as well as electricity and hence the option c is the right one fifth one the weight of silver displaced by quantity of electricity which displaces 5600 ml of o2 at stp will be so here how to solve this what they have given before this you should know since 22400 ml is occupied by one mole of o2 at stp okay so one mole of any gas at stp standard temperature pressure condition will occupy the volume of 22400 ml or 22.4 liter it is regardless law now what they have given 5600 ml of o2 okay 5600 ml of o2 is equal to how much how much moles of o2 first that you have to calculate silver displaces 5600 ml so 5600 ml means how many moles it can be calculated by 5600 divided by 22400 so you will get 1 divided by 4 mole of o2 then how much it means if i want the weight of o2 that is displaced so that is o2 is equal to 1 by 4 into molecular mass of O2 is 32. So it gives 8 gram. This is weight of O2. You can write it as W O2. Now according to the question, since silver displaces the O2 equivalent of Ag that is silver is equal to equivalent weight of oxygen. Therefore, here we can write weight of Ag divided by equivalent weight of Ag is equal to weight of O2 divided by equivalent weight of O2. And here I will simply write weight of Ag is equal to weight of O2 divided by equivalent weight here i will represent it as m okay into how much equivalent weight of ag okay equivalent weight of ag so how can i write it wag is equal to wo2 means weight of o2 that is already calculated here that is 8 divided by equivalent weight of o2 how much it is equivalent weight of O2? How you calculate that? Molecular weight divided by the valence. So since the molecular weight of O2 is 32 and divided by, if you write, you will get 4 here. That is valency. 1 oxygen 2, 2 oxygen 4. So I will simply write it as, this 4 comes here. So I will write it as 4. Into molecular that is equivalent weight of Ag how much it is it is 108 okay that is already known so therefore weight of Ag 
how much you will get on solving you will get 108 gram okay so here you can simply write it 4 ones are 4 eights are 8 ones are 8 ones are so 1 into 108 so 108 grams therefore weight of silver which is displaced by the quantity of electricity which displaces 500 5600 ml of o2 at stp will be 108 gram means 108 gram of silver is displaced by 5600 ml of o2 option d is the right one then sixth one once a current of 1 ampere was passed through 1 liter of cucl2 solution for 16 minute 5 seconds all of the solutions copper was deposited at cathode the power of solution cucl2 was so you need to calculate the concentration of this cucl2 so first red right down here you need to find the charge okay how you will find the charge q is equal to i into t so i is how much current is passed one into time is 16 minutes 5 seconds so 16 minutes 5 seconds that is equal to how many seconds how much you will get 965 seconds so 16 minutes means 960 plus 5 seconds so 965 seconds okay, I have converted that into seconds so 965 therefore Q is equal to 965 Coulomb. This is the charge. Now, the CuCl2 power of the solution is equal to 1 divided by 2 into 96,500 into 965 is equal to how much? 1 divided by 200. So, how much you will get? 0.02 N. Then, here W divided by mw is equal to i into t divided by 96500 into n so therefore n is equal to rearranging this i will get 1 into 965 divided by 96500 into n is equal to how much n is equal to 2 because cu plus 2 it will undergo reduction by gaining two electrons so here n number of electrons involved will be two therefore n is equal to nita is equal to 90 sorry 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 and now if you want to find the normality since 0 0.05 here it is not given so convert that into normality so 2 into 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 will give how much 0 0.01 so this is the answer that is option a the okay, option a is the right answer then seventh one on electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid using platinum electrodes the product obtained at anode will be so here electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid okay using platinum electrodes what type of reaction will take place at anode so here this can be represented as 2OH minus it gives H2O plus half O2 so which one is liberated here here oxygen is obtained and hence the option B is the right answer. Eighth one, a device that converts energy of combustion of fields like hydrogen and methane directly into electrical energy is known as so electrolytic cell, dynamo, nickel cadmium cell, fuel cell. So option D, as you have learned in synopsis, so the option D is the correct answer definition of fuel cell ninth one which of the reaction is not feasible k 
AO plus BR2 gives 2KBR plus I2. It is feasible. 2KBR plus I2 gives 2KI plus BR2. So see here, I2, since it is less reactive, and BR is more reactive. And hence, I2 cannot be able to replace BR, since it is less reactive. And hence, this reaction is not possible. So it is not feasible. Then we see another two reactions, KBR plus Cl2. Cl2 is more reactive than BR, hence this reaction is also takes place, it is feasible. And H2O plus 2F2, fluorine is re more reactive than oxygen and hence this reaction is also feasible. So option B, this reaction is not feasible. Tenth one, without losing its concentration, ZnCl2 solution cannot be kept in contact with aurum that is gold, aluminium, lead, silver. Gold, it is very less reactive, so it won't react with ZnCl. Lead is also less reactive than zinc. Silver is also less reactive than zinc. But aluminium is more reactive than zinc. And hence aluminium can displace zinc. Okay. And hence option B is the right answer. Without losing its concentration, we cannot be kept in contact with the aluminum. Okay, but we can keep that ZNCl2 solution with these things. But it cannot be kept in contact with the aluminum because aluminum will displace zinc since it is more reactive than zinc. So option B is the right answer. Eleventh one, resistance of 0.2 M solution of an electrolyte is 50 Watt. The specific conductance of the solution is 1.3 Siemen per meter. If resistance of the 0.4 M solution of the same electrolyte is 260 Ohm, its molar conductivity is it should be ohm, not that. Okay. The resistance it is represented as ohm. So now what do you need to find? Molar conductivity. Okay. First see here what they have given resistance of 0.2 M solution of electrolyte is 50 ohm. The specific conductance of this solution is 1.3 Siemen per meter. So here first we write specific conductance okay how we give the specific conductance it is given by the product of conductance into cell constant okay this is how we can represent the specific conductance so what is conductance reciprocal of resistance into what is cell constant it is the ratio of length per unit area and how specific conductance is denoted? Kappa. So here, this specific conductance is equal to 1 divided by resistance of the solution is 50. So 1 divided by 50 into L divided by A. And this is equal to how much? 1.3 Siemen per meter. This is kappa value. So therefore, Rearrange this, how much you will get? L by A is equal to 1.3 into 50 per meter. Okay. Or 1.3 into 50 into 10 raised to minus 2 per centimeter. I have converted this into per meter into per centimeter. Hence I have taken 10 raised to minus 2. So here simply the kappa means 1.3. Okay, I have cross multiplied this and I have got this value. Therefore, L by A is equal to 1.3 into 50 into 10 raised to minus 2. Okay, for 0.4 M, this is for 0.2 M. Okay, now another solution is given that is 0.4 M. So therefore, for 0.4 M solution, what would be the resistance? Resistance is equal to, 
how you represent rho into l by a density into length divided by area and how we can represent rho 1 by rho is equal to kappa okay that is equal to 1 by r into l by a again the same expression we have used so substitute the values what you will get 1 divided by r is 260 into l divided by a so how much you will get again 1 divided by 260 into l by a means what 1.3 into 50 that value you have to substitute because you already know that 1.3 into 50 into 10 raised to minus 2 per centimeter so it is 1260 not 20 260 so how much you will get 1 divided by 260 into 1.3 into 50 into 10 raised to minus 2 into 1000 divided by 4 because you should know lambda m is equal to molar conductance is equal to kappa into 1000 divided by m therefore substitute this you will get this answer 1.3 so on your simplification you will get 6.25 into 10 raised to minus 4 semen meter square per mole so convert this into centimeter 6.25 semen square centimeter per mole so which option is right here 6.25 semen square centimeter per mole and uh, so i have missed this into 10 raised to so keep it as it is so 6.25 semen square centimeter per mole or 6.25 into 10 raised to minus 4 semen meter square per mole so which answer is right here option c 11th 11th answer that is option c 12th one the standard emf of galvanic cell Involving three moles of electrons in its redox reaction is 0 0.59 volt. The equilibrium constant for the reaction of the cell is so the simple one what they have given E naught cell is equal to how much 0 0.59 volt and n is equal to how much 3 moles of electron so n is equal to 3. Then equilibrium constant you need to find. What is the formula for relationship between standard EMF and equilibrium constant? So it is given by E naught cell is equal to 0 0.0591 divided by N log K. Therefore log K is equal to 0 0.59 into 3 divided by 0 0.0591 so here i have rearranged this and i will get this one and how much i will get on simplification i will get 30 so log k is equal to 30 so here the base is 10 therefore k is equal to 10 raised to 30 therefore the answer for this will be option D. Next, thirteenth one. Nine point six five coulomb of electric current is passed through fused anhydrous magnesium chloride. The magnesium metal thus obtained is completely converted into a Grignard reagent. The number of moles of the Grignard reagent obtained is so first. Write down what does Mg anhydrous magnesium chloride so here mg plus 2 will undergo reduction by taking two electrons so what it will form mg so two moles two electrons forms one mg one mole of mg so for one mg how much mg is formed one by two for one electron one mole of electron half mg is formed or half moles of mg is formed that is equal to 
half into so it is how much current is passed 9.65 divided by faraday's constant that is 96500 so on simplification you will get pi into 10 raised to minus 5 now they have told you that they it will form grignard reaction so rx plus mg gives rmg x so this is the grignard reaction so 1 mg will form 1 mole of 1 mole of mg will form 1 mole of grignard reaction therefore it will gives 10 pi into 10 raised to minus pi number of moles of grignard reagent will be obtained because here this much number of magnesium is formed and hence the same amount of grignard reagent is also formed therefore option c pi into 10 raised to minus pi is the right answer in 14th one the potential of a hydrogen electrode at ph 10 is so ph is 10 what is the standard hydrogen electrode potential so using the formula h plus is equal to 10 raised to minus ph ph means it is the concentration of h plus ions that is equal to 10 raised to minus ph because you know ph is equal to negative logarithm of h plus ion concentration so we can write this in this form now concentration of h plus ions will be equal to 10 raised to minus 10 m because ph is how much 10 therefore 10 raised to minus 10 m now electrode reaction which type of reaction will takes place okay electrode reaction will be written as h plus plus electron gives half h2 this is the reaction now use the formula e cell is equal to since we have to find the electrode potential so e cell is equal to e not cell minus 0.0591 divided by n log of concentration of h2 divided by concentration of h plus ions so substitute the values what is the standard electrode potential for hydrogen electrode it is 0 minus 0.0591 divided by n is how much it is 1 because one electron is involved 1 log h2 concentration of h2 is 1 and divided by concentration of h plus ion is 10 raised to minus 10 therefore what you will get you will get minus 0.0591 Okay, log of one into ten raised to minus ten. One divided by ten raised to minus ten. So minus zero point zero five nine one into log of one divided by ten raised to minus ten is is nothing but ten. Therefore, how much you will get? Minus zero point zero five. Sorry, minus zero point five nine one. So five nine one volt. this is the potential of a hydrogen electrode at ph 10 therefore the option c is the right one fifteenth one an increase in equivalent conductance of a strong electrolyte with dilution is mainly due to increase in both that is the number of ions and ionic mobility of ions increase in number of ions increase in ionic mobility of ions and 100% ionization of electrolyte at normal dilution so which answer is right here as similar question is present in previous questions so here option c due to the increase in the mobility of ions the conductivity will increases so option c is the right one 16th one 
for the reduction of silver ions with copper metal the standard cell potential was found to be 0.46 volt at 25 degree celsius the value of standard gibbs energy that is delta g will be so given 90 cf is equal to 96500 coulomb per mole so you need to find standard free energy change that is delta g not is equal to minus n f e not cell so first write down what they have given n is equal to how much so reduction of silver ions how you will represent cu with copper metal so 2 ag plus gives cu plus 2 plus 2 ag okay therefore here n is equal to how much 2 because 1 ag gives 1 plus and 2 ag are there so 2 ag will give 2 electrons and 1 copper will lose 2 electrons so n is equal to 2 Now, E not cell. How much it is? E not cell is equal to plus zero point four six volt. Therefore, n is e, n is equal to two, and E not cell is equal to plus zero point four six volt. So delta G not is equal to how much? Minus two into ninety six thousand five hundred into E not cell is zero point four six. So how much you will get? Will get minus eighty nine kilo joule. That is delta G naught. Option C is the right one. Seventeenth one. Which of the following electrolytic solutions has the least specific conductance? So what does specific conductance means? Specific conductance means it is the number of ions per cc okay number of ions per cc and as number of ions decreases the specific conductance will also decreases so among these four options which one is having very low number of ions so here if you observe the option d it is 0.002n its concentration is very less that means the number of ions per cc is very minimum and hence the minimum number of ions per cc decreases the specific conductance of the solution therefore option d is the right answer and it in turn the highest electrical conductivity of the following aqueous solutions is 0.1 m stic acid 0.1 m chloroacetic acid 0.1 m fluoroacetic acid 0.1 m difluoroacetic acid so here the conduction of electric charge mainly depends on the ions higher the number of ions higher is the conductivity so here the fluoro group which causes negative effect increases the ionization thus see here fluoro it is less electronegative fluoro is more electronegative okay acetic acid is weak electrolyte so it is not possible it does not have highest electrical conductivity and among fluoro and chloro chloro is having least less electronegativity as compared to fluorine but in this only one fluorine is there but in this case two fluorine atoms are there and hence the negative inductive effect will be more in case of difluoroacetic here it can be represented as difluoroacetic acid okay so it can be represented in this manner okay so here since fluorine two fluorine atoms are highly electronegative the movement of electrons can be seen like this so ionization will be more it gives more stable ions in the solution and hence the conductivity of the more 0.1 m difluoroacetic acid will be high so option d is the right answer 19th one saturated solution of kno3 is used to make salt bridge because so if you go through the functions of salt bridge there you come to know here 
the transport number of the ions if they are similar then it is mainly used as a salt bridge it is more preferred if they are having same transport number and if they are having same transport number that means the velocity of both the ions will be same so here also saturated solution of kno3 is used to make salt bridge because the velocity of k plus and no3 minus ions are same so hence we use kno3 to make salt bridge so among these four options which one is right velocity of k plus is greater than no3 so velocity of no3 minus is greater than that of k plus it is also wrong velocity of both k plus and no3 minus are nearly the same so option c is the right answer and it is for the electrochemical cell so here e not of m plus bar m is 0.44 and e not of x to x minus is 0.33 volt so it has undergone reduction and it has undergone oxidation therefore here e not cell okay that is equal to e not cathode minus e not anode so at cathode which one has undergone reduction gaining of electron this m so m plus gets converted into m therefore 0.44 volt okay when the which one is undergone reduction sorry oxidation x to x minus so 0.33 volt now that oxidation potential since it is oxidized so it is denoted as minus so here it would be taken as so sorry here it is plus so plus into minus 0.33 volt therefore what it gives 0.44 minus 0.33 volt that is equal to how much it is 0.11 volt that is e not cell therefore here this one can be seen in m plus gets oxidized to m this is seen in option b and x minus it sorry it would be x and it should be x minus so here it is this spontaneous reaction and it is non spontaneous and 0.77 volt here you have obtained 0.11 so here the option b is the right answer okay so this is all about the electrochemistry